This is the first in a series of videos on modeling with exponential and logarithmic functions. So basically uh, exponential word problems. And this is the most important formula. Um, there are several, but this is the one that most all of them will follow. So you have the output is equal to A, and A is the initial value, initial amount, times B, which is your growth factor to the x, that's your input, over c, and c is a hard, hard to explain until we look at an example. c is the time it takes for, for a to grow that, that factor one time. So I'll explain. You can't multiply those two together because you've got this exponent on the base that you'd have to do first. Okay, so a lot of the formulas that you might see in the lab manual even um, might look like different formulas, but they're really the same thing. So the doubling time formula is y equals a times 2 to the x over c. That's just because we're telling you that it doubles, so the growth factor would be 2. And then you might have some function notation, n of t equals n sub o. That just means that subscript 0 means uh, this is the initial value times 2 to the t for time over a, which is still the time it takes for us to be able to use that doubling factor once. So the letters may change, but this uh, formula isn't changing. Half-life. Half-life is the time it takes for half of the substance to go away, so that's got a decay factor of a half m of t equals m sub o times 1 half 2 to the t over h. That's really just this formula but with different letters. Initial value uh, times 1 half to the t over h. And I'm not sure if that lab manual page is right. Just look in the lab manual for exponential modeling. All right, so let's, let's use this formula to write some functions uh, on our, in our examples here. So first, well, first one says a substance is 4 pounds initially. So that would be your initial value. And it doubles. That means you're going to multiply by 2, but not until 3 hours have passed. So your growth factor is b equals 2, and your c is 3. So to, find, to write a function, y, the output, equals the initial value 4 times 2 to the x over 3. And you can check it out. If you put three hours, you know, you can do it in your head. If you've got four pounds initially, how much will you have after three hours? Well, it doubles, so four times two is eight. How much will you have after six hours? Well, eight times two is 16. So you can check it out. If you put three in for x here, three divided by three is one, and so you get to use that two times four. Okay, so if it were just two hours, you wouldn't get to use that two yet. So that's what we mean by C is the time it takes for A to grow or decrease by B one time. Okay, take a look at the second example. A substance is 1.4 grams initially and triples every five days. Okay, so that would be Y equals our initial value 1.4 triples means b is going to be 3. You're going to multiply by 3, but you can't multiply by 3 until 5 days have passed. Now look at those two functions and I will tell you that something is missing. I kind of forgot to do it with the first one, but it's actually good that I did because with exponentials it's extremely important that you identify for people what x is because here your unit is hours and here your unit is days, and so that makes a big deal. I could say two days on this problem, and you would have to convert it to 48 hours. So you always are going to follow up your function by saying, hey, x in this problem is in hours, and x in this problem is in days. So be sure and do that. Now it's, now it's complete. Example 3, a substance is 2.1 kilograms initially and it has a half-life of 3,000 years. So that means that this substance starts out at 2.1 and after 3,000 years have passed 
half of it will be gone. Okay. So that means that this is a decay problem. So your output is going to equal your initial value and you're going to be multiplying by one half but you cannot multiply by one half until 3,000 years have passed. So we have to divide out the 3,000 and then don't forget to tell people hey x is in years. Okay, so this is the general exponential function. y equals a initial value times b growth or decay factor to the x over c which is the time it takes for us to be able to use that growth factor one time. Okay, now working off of this we have a new formula. This is an exponential function given growth and decay as a percentage rate. Okay, so here is your second formula. So everything looks exactly the same. You still have an initial value, you still have it to the x over c. That part's the same. The only thing that's different is the 1 plus or minus r. So that means that if it's growth, it's going to be y equals a times 1 plus r to the x over c. And if it's decay, it's going to be y equals a times 1 minus r to the x over c. All right, And the reason that this 1 is here is because sometimes we give you the growth or decay fact, not as a factor, not as multiplied by 2, but as a percentage rate. All right, So r is uh, given to you as a percentage and so you have to remember to convert the percentage, always have to convert it to a decimal. Alright, so let's look at this example. $500 grows by 3% every 6 months. Okay, so we have y equals our initial value, 500. And 3% is 0 0.03. So now I can explain why the 1 is there. So in the formula, we're given a percent. So this is going to be 1 plus 0 0.03 to the x over 6, where x is in months. Let's finish this out, and then I'll go back. So why is that 1 there? Well, remember, you have to say 3% of what when you're talking about percent. So the 500 is growing by 3%, but that 500 is still going to be around. It's going to be 500 plus 3% of 500. So that 1 ensures that you stick the 500 sticks around plus 3% of that 500. Okay. Um, so that when it's a percentage rate you have to remember that we're really the multiplier we can add 1 plus 0.03 and get 1.03 so now the growth factor is 1.03 the growth rate was 3 percent see the difference that's your multiplier when six months pass you can multiply that 500 by 1.03 which means you're going to have 500 plus 3% of that 500. So when it's a growth rate, when you're even a percentage, you need the 1 in front of it. The same thing holds for decay, but it's a little tricky because it kind of hides. I'll show you. So a 5 pound substance decays by 4 and 1 fifth percent every year. Okay, so with examples, I also want to throw in some things that we need to talk about. 4 and 1 fifth really means 4 plus 0.2. So that's 4.2 percent. You can't deal with a mixed number. Okay, so that's going to be 0.042. That's your decimal uh, for 4.2 percent. Okay, because you divide by 100. You move the decimal two places to the left. All right, so now we can continue. Y equals, this initial value is 5. Now this is decay and you're given a decay rate, not a factor, so you have to have that 1 minus 0 0.042 to the x, and that happens every year, so that's x over 1, where x is in years. All right, so if you simplify that, you get a decay factor of, and see this is why it's harder to see, because when you subtract, you can't really see that 0 0.042 when it it's going to show up as 
0.958 to the x. So that 0.958 comes from 1 minus that decimal there. If it's less than 1, then you know it's decay. Okay, so to find the decay rate, you would have to say, oh, 1 minus 0.958 is 0.042, which is 4.2%. It's not as easy as growth, where you can just see the 3% growth there. But to see how it's greater than 1, if it's greater than 1, it's growth. If it's less than 1, it's decay. Okay, so this formula and this formula are very similar. It's just that 1 is given as a growth factor, a multiplier, multiply by 2, multiply by 2, multiply by 2. And this one you're given is when you use when you're given a percentage rate. And you need that 1 in there. That 1 represents, you know, so you don't forget about what you started with. Let's look at an example. Uh, the number of wolves in the wild in the northern section of the Catawba County is decreasing at a rate of 3.5% per year. Your international studies class has counted 80 wolves in the area. Write an exponential function for this situation. That's always what you want to do first. And then use that function to answer this question. After how many years will this population of wolves drop below 15 wolves? If this rate of decrease continues. Okay, so we know it's exponential. It says it's decreasing at a rate of so we know it's exponential decay. All right, so y equals a times 1 minus r to the x over c is the formula we would use because we're given a percent and it's decay. Okay, so um, if you want to use function notation, it says use a function notation, so I'm going to change my y to something like uh, w of x. That's my output when I know or I can change it to t. Let's just do that for time. So when I know the time, I'll know the number of wolves. A is the initial number of wolves, and that said that was 80. Right there, 80 wolves. Okay, times 1 minus, they're decaying at 3.5%, so we have to change that to a decimal. That's 0 0.035. To the t, and that they're decaying that fat by per year, so over 1, where t is in years. So we can simplify that. w of t is equal to 80 times 1 minus 0 0.035, 0 0.965 to the t, where t is in years. So we have written our function. We used function notation. Don't be afraid to change the variables around. Uh, all right, now we can answer this question. After how many years will this population of wolves drop below 15 wolves? Well, remember, T is years. That's our input. And W is number of wolves. That's our output. So we, I've given you an output input question. You would have to put 15 in here and solve for T. Okay, so in a previous video, I showed you how to solve exponential equations. So now we get to practice that. So what we want to do, remember, you have to divide out this number here. I call it the initial value. Uh, now you know why in a word problem it's always the initial value. You have to divide that out first. All right, so 15 over 80 reduces to something 3 16ths. I'll leave it 3 16ths. So we have 3 16ths is equal to 0.965t. Now the way I teach it might be different than the lab manual. I teach you to get that t out of that exponent spot by taking the natural log of both sides. And then using the power property. And What that does, that makes the t move out front and now it's t times. So we know how to solve for t when it's being multiplied by something, you have to divide. So I'm going to divide natural log of 3 sixteenths by the natural log of 0.965. That'll get t by itself. And then I pick up my calculator. So we have natural log 
of 3 divided by 16 divided by a natural log of 0.965 and I haven't done any rounding so this I want to try to not round until the very final answer so you see we get 46.985 if I round that to the hundredths place that's 46.99 and then we look at years t's and years okay so if I say round to the hundredths place you have to be good at doing that don't round up to 47 alright let's look at another one the population of frogs in Old McDonald's farm is increasing at a rate of 83% per decade. He counted 80 frogs yesterday. Write an exponential function and find how many frogs will be in his pond five years. So first thing we have to do is find the function then we'll use it to answer the question. Okay so this one let's say it's f of t so your input is t and it's time in now this is interesting because it says 83 percent per decade so you have choices I'll do it both ways so you can see why it's important to tell people what T is so let's let T be decades first so every 10 years every decade all right so your function your in uh, initial values 80 frogs and this time it's increasing so this is a growth problem at a rate of 83 percent per decade so that's 1 plus 0.83 to the x over well you let t or I'm sorry let's let that be t you let t be in decades so when do you get to use that after one decade all right so this function would be 80 times 1.83 to the t where t is in decades well the questions asking you about five years so you could have done this problem where you said wait a minute let's let t be in years I'm more comfortable with that okay so then your initial value would be 80 your one that makes sure you pick up all hundred percent of that 80 plus 0.83 to the t but you can't use that multiplier that growth factor until 10 years have passed so what is the only thing different about these two see which who's right see I need I need if you do this you have to tell me t is in decades if you do this you have to tell me t is in years if you don't then I think you made a mistake you have to tell me what you're letting T be now let's see if they both work out the same okay so the question is how many frogs will be in this pond after five years so that means we get to plug what in here if T is in decades well if T is five years that's a half a decade so we can't plug five in here we have to plug 0 0.5 in there all right let's see what that comes out to be 80 times 1.83 to the 0.5 and that's going to give you after half a decade you're going to have 108.2220 frogs if I round that to the to four decimal places one two three four look at the fifth decimal round that up that makes that one go to two all right let's see what happens on this side this one t was in years so how many frogs will be in his pond after five years f5 equals 80 times 1.83 to the 5 tenths power which is one half which is 0.5 but I'll go ahead and do it 80 parentheses 1.83 to the 5 tenths power same exact answer 108.2220 frogs so that should tell you why exponentials you really need to tell me what t is